<laughs> yes, the Sooners and the Cyclones will kick it off this Saturday. And before the Sooners can even think about that three-game gauntlet this November with games at Baylor, TCU, and, of course, Thanksgiving week that Saturday in Stillwater against Oklahoma State, Sooners need to take care of business first against the Iowa State team that's better than you might think. Iowa State proved that this past Saturday with a 24-0 win over Texas. That's right, the same Texas team that, quite frankly, kicked Oklahoma all over the Cotton Bowl field in the only game that Oklahoma has lost this season. So 7-1 Oklahoma against an Iowa State team that has to feel pretty good about themselves entering Saturday night's game at Gaylord Memorial. 6 o'clock kickoff from Norman. This Saturday, game can be seen on ESPNU and also on Watch ESPN. Sooners getting a lot of love, though, from Vegas, a 24-and-a-half point favorite. And I guess I can see why. I mean, look at how the Sooners have been playing these past three weeks. They have they have put the Texas game behind them. And, yeah, you feel bad for the Sooners that they lost the Horns. But the last three games, you know, all Oklahoma has done on both sides of the ball is execute. I mean, I mean, you look at how they've done on the defensive side. They are now the number one team in the Big 12 when it comes to uh, total D. Um, they're only giving up 297 yards per game. And then the high-scoring league known as the Big 12, that's pretty darn good. And the scoring defense in the league, just 16 points per game. Tops as well. Offensively, wow. Um, they've been putting up the numbers. And for just um, the second time in recent years, by the way, the first time since 2008, the Sooners have had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games where they've scored at least 50 points. In the last two games, they've scored over 60. And for the first time ever in school history, the last three games, at least 30 first downs in each of those games. That's never happened in a three-game stretch before for Oklahoma in their rich history where they've been playing football for over 100 years. They've been had three games in a row where they've had at least 30 first downs in each game. That's ball control for you. Right there. Ground game's been doing their part. Offensive line's gotten better. And, of course, the passing game has been outstanding with Baker Mayfield, who completed just about anything that he threw last Saturday in Lawrence and made hardly any mistakes at all. So, again, you can't control who you play. We know that Kansas State, this is the Kansas State of old, and Texas Tech and Kansas defenses both suck. But still, Sooners took care of business, didn't look ahead, and they're getting better. And at 7-1, trying to make it 8-1, they know that Iowa State will, um, you know, not be overlooked. They're, they're not going to look at Iowa State at all. No way. Um, Iowa State will come in thinking ball control. And, again, we'll talk about the matchup in a second. But first, did you hear what happened Monday in Norman, just two hours after the Bob Stoops press conference? Bob Stoops was seen strapped on a flatbed. Standing 10 feet tall. Well, not the actual Bob Stoops, but a statue. Tenth of statue of Bob Stoops. Um, and it was not covered at all. So it was, you know, Bob Stoops, you know, wearing a visor. It gets about 10 feet tall. A statue of him. And it was not supposed to have been viewed at all by the general public. They were obviously supposed to put a tarp on it or found an alternate transportation route or something. But the point was that it is strapped standing up on a flatbed, and a uh, NBC Oklahoma City um, sportscaster named Nate Biken just happened to be behind uh, the flatbed, took a picture of it, posted it on Twitter, and it got a lot of views. And, of course, you know, Joe Castiglione, the Oklahoma Athletic Director, is not too happy. In fact, he's disappointed with the whole story altogether, and he made his feelings known about that, Dick Castiglione, in a press statement that Monday night. Now, three years ago, keep in mind that the um, that Oklahoma University did ask Stoops with his permission if they can could um, unveil a statue of him to be um, displayed in front of Gaylord Memorial Stadium. Remember that the Sooners already have the three Bs in terms of coaches with statues already in front of the stadium as well: Benny Owen, Bob Wilkinson, and Barry Switzer. And Stoops, you know, gave the okay for the statue under the condition that that statue uh, not be um, seen, displayed in front of the stadium until his coaching days at Oklahoma are over. He said that he would feel too weird to have that statue on display while he's still coaching. So he said, do it, but, and, but do it after I'm done coaching at Oklahoma, whenever that might be. And if you're a Sooner fan, hopefully Stoops is coaching for a pretty long time. So hopefully next time you see that statue 
it won't be, but for quite a few years from now, and of course, it'll be alongside the other three Bs of um, Sooner Coaching Greats. But an interesting story of a statute that did not get covered, um, and Sooners are, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you don't know if you want to laugh or you feel embarrassed about it. One thing's for sure, though, that flatbed, kind of fortunate that uh, it didn't hit a big bump or make a sudden turn or a car didn't hit it. Otherwise, that 10-foot statue might have been history. All right, let's go ahead and talk about, um, you know, the Oklahoma Sooners and, of course, an offense that has been electric um, and the, the numbers don't lie. You know, they've been putting up gigantic numbers in uh, recent weeks. And when you get the ground game sizzling, it definitely sets everything up for success. And they'll have to do that against an Iowa State defense that uh, – really made Texas try to earn every yard they could, and it wasn't very many yards that Texas got in Ames on Saturday. I mean, let's face it, um, Texas barely held over 200 yards in that matchup that last Saturday night, and after three quarters, Texas barely had 120 yards. So Iowa State was going to make uh, Texas win the game with the arm of Hurd or the arm of Swoops, the Texas QBs, and it did not happen. In fact, Texas couldn't get the ball past the Iowa State 47-yard line until the very last possession of the game. And, of course, it was 24-0. Game was history. So you got to tip your hat off to Paul Rhodes' team. And that's right there an indication that, yeah, it's not been a great season for Iowa State. They have five losses. But remember, it's a team that's fought hard. They didn't lose by much to an Iowa team that's undefeated. Yeah, TCU uh, beat Iowa State. But for a half, it was a competitive game. Baylor was having their way with the Cyclones, but the second half, the Seth Russell injury, and of course Iowa State, even though they lost the game, played a better second half, made a quarterback change. They pulled Sam B. Richardson, and of course uh, Joel uh, Lanning came in and um, did a respectable job, even though Cyclones lost. And Iowa State lost in overtime to Toledo, who was undefeated until, until last Tuesday night when they uh, lost to Bowling Green. So Iowa State's schedule, it's not been easy so far, especially when you consider that they've played uh, two heavyweights so far in the Big 12. But last Saturday against a Texas team that uh, had beaten Oklahoma and beaten Kansas State, uh, the Cyclones shut Texas down and at the same time got terrific ball control uh, from Mike Warren, who's been their best player so far this season. That's right, Mike Warren. That name sounds familiar. It should to people from the um, Sooner State because he played his high school ball in southwest Oklahoma at Lawton, a guy that the Sooners were interested in. But remember, they already had some Ajay P. Ryan um, in that same class and also to uh, Joe Mixon. And if it weren't for Mixon, um, Warren would have been that next guy on Oklahoma's list, uh, but it wasn't to be. And who's to say that Warren would have, would, have, would have come to Oklahoma if he had been offered? But it worked out well for both schools. You know, Warren has done a fantastic job in this, his Redshirt freshman year, leading the Big 12 in rushing. In fact, I think he needs about 50 more yards to eclipse 1,000. He's on his way to being a first-team All-Big 12 um, running back. Not bad for a uh, redshirt freshman. And, of course, things have worked out well for Oklahoma with their uh, tandem of P. Ryan and with Mixon. And the ground game has been coming along well these past three weeks after September, in which it really, for the most part, didn't do much at all under Lincoln Riley's air raid attack. So... Looking at this particular game, what do I think is going to happen? I think, first of all, from Oklahoma's defensive perspective, just keep putting pressure on the quarterback. And right now the Sooners lead the Big 12 in quarterback sacks. That's the big, big thing to keep in mind. Um, they will put pressure on uh, Landing. But remember, Landing is a good scrambler. So they have to keep him in check. And at the same time, Make sure, you know, the, the, the line, you know, with, with Matt Diamond up front, you know, with Charles Walker and Tapper, um, know their gap assignments because, you know, Mike Warren is one of those running backs that we saw against Texas that he just doesn't go down after contact. He keeps those legs moving. He's a hard back to bring down, about six yards to carry. So if you can contain Mike Warren, and it, I think if you can hold it in the 95 yards or 100, that's a pretty good game. He had about 150, 160 yards this past week against Texas, and because of that, Iowa State was able to incorporate a little bit of a passing game, um, especially with Alan um, Lazard. So you have to realize that I Iowa State is looking for balance, but the most important thing that Cyclones are looking for is time of possession. They'll melt that clock down as much as they can. They average 33 minutes per game, time of possession-wise. That's number one in the Big 12. The thing is, they don't mind taking that play clock down as low as possible, and 
that would limit Oklahoma opportunities. For Oklahoma offensively, they know that um, Iowa State will try to do their best to take the run out. And I think if you're the Sooners, make the passing game a, a very high priority because, you know, Iowa State has been vulnerable, probably the middle of the lower of the pack when it comes to passing defense. They gave up a lot of yardage against Texas Tech, as a lot of teams do. And for Iowa State, that was one of those games where defensively they were really, really off and couldn't handle the Red Raiders in Lubbock. Could see more of that same type of game in Norman. And you could see Mayfield really utilizing not only receivers, but also, too, utilizing both P. Ryan and Mixon as receivers as well. And when those two guys are in the game at the same time, talking about P. Ryan and talking about um, the likes of uh, Mixon, uh, big things can happen. And again, the tight end, Andrews, continues to show his um, his terrific presence as well. Don't expect for Oklahoma to see um, Alvarez, at offensive guard, the um, ankle injury, uh, I think was that severe to where you're not going to see him. Doubtful that you'll see for another week, Zach Sanchez. Hopefully you'll have those guys ready to go for the Baylor game. Bottom line is all Oklahoma needs to do is take care of the ball. They've been very good in Big 12 play when it comes to takeaways. Iowa State has not been when it comes to takeaway department. Just the opposite, second worst in the Big 12 conference. Oklahoma has been second best with plus seven. Iowa State's at a minus six. So as long as Oklahoma does not beat themselves, as long as you can see uh, Mayfield um, do what he's been doing for the past few weeks, uh, which is really utilizing that short quick pass game. I see Oklahoma putting up at least 42 on the board. In fact, I'm going to go 42 to 17. I think Oklahoma gets the job done. I think the point spread's pretty close in this game. I do think Mike Warren's going to get yardage for Iowa State. I just don't think they're going to have enough passing Iowa State is in order to keep up with the Sooners. And I just don't think Iowa State's pass defense matches up well. They beat Texas last week, but Texas did not feature a passing attack like Oklahoma's. I think this is a good matchup for the Sooners. And I think they'll go to 8-1, and one, getting ready for that three-game stretch. My post game will be either late Saturday night or Sunday morning. Don't forget about my college football picks. Me and the five-cent piece pick against the spread sometime Thursday. Thanks for watching, Boomer Sooner.